Hey everyone, here's Marcin and welcome to another video. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe if you are interested in retouching and photography. And today I want to talk about the retouching itself, about what is professional retouching, about retouching techniques, and also about one of the first retouching courses I made, um, because it's still one of my most popular courses. I don't think it is my best course. This is very interesting, but the viewers seems to think it is my best course. So that's why I'm actually going to plug my course into this video and tell you how you can get this possibly for free. So what is the matter? Two years ago, over two years ago, I think three years ago, I made a course um, on the hype of uh, shortcut techniques, shortcut retouching techniques, let's say. And this course till, till now is, is a bestseller. And a few days back, someone asked me a question about the course that I say in the course already back then that frequency separation is not professional retouching technique. But many other teachers, many other teachers was claiming that frequency separation is superior technique that will bring your retouching to absolutely another level, that is professional technique and the one technique to use and allows you to separate the texture and color. So where is the true? I'm going to tell you as the professional retoucher, what is the true about frequency separation and professional retouching. So uh, starting from the beginning, frequency separation is not a professional technique. Um, frequency separation got hype a few years back, maybe around five years back, four years back, start picking up. So when I was making the course, I, I, I left small warning that uh, frequency separation is indeed not the professional technique, but at the same point, um, this was actually frequency separation was bringing a lot of people because it allows you to retouch a little faster. So I had to include this in the course and that was probably good thing for for me as the person who advertised the course, who tried to make the course popular, because many people um, also were looking, except the other things and all of the professional techniques, they wanted to know more about the frequency separation, the idea behind that, uh, how to use it. So I tried to uh, fill the subject, um, basic cleanup, the professional cleanup using basic tools. I fill this all. And I also did huge section about the frequency separation. So the person was why I said it's not professional, but I also made the whole section about frequency separation. I also did use this um, in the course. So the explanation is because people look for this. I am professional retoucher, but this is very narrow um narrow profession, I would say. And um, I also try to make, of course, courses for, for everyone, not only for, for retouchers, because uh, I think there is some other retouchers making retouching course. If everyone would like exclude probably frequency separation, there would be not many customers because um, actually people, people seek for shortcuts. But I always warn if you are um, aiming to be really professional photographer, like get to another level or retoucher, and this is the technique that uh, you shouldn't really use. So why is that? Because many people think that frequency separation indeed allows you to separate colors and from texture, so it's so superior. And the truth is it doesn't necessarily do it. It does separate the texture and color in, in, in the big way. Um, but the point is, it's not really good to use it on the layers below the high frequency um, because it, it will destroy the natural features of the face. And I'm guilty of presenting that, in fact. Um, but the other thing is that the high frequency layer to explain this very clear, it does not contain only the texture, as many people think. And easy to, to prove this when you actually will drag the high pass filter that be, because basically what's the, the, the top layer 
is very selective high pass filter through apply image but if you would go higher with with the filter you actually can see that some of the color goes through this top layer so if I would have to describe percentages, there will be maybe 95%, 5% of the color actually goes to this top layer. So it's not necessarily full true if someone says that the top layer is just the texture. And so if you retouch professionally, fashion retouching, for example, there is barely any touch and burn on fashion retouching. Um, beauty retouching requires a lot of touch and burn, but going with frequency separation, it's not always the great idea. So once this subject is closed, let me go to my screen, tell you how you can get the course and talk about what is actually in the course. Uh, in Photoshop, I'm going to show you the layers and the image. I was able to find the PSD file that um, is in this course. So what I want to offer um, to you right now, um, it, it's the skill share. Uh, there's two ways yeah, you, I, I will include two links. One will be Udemy and one will be uh, Skillshare. Um, why I'm showing actually Skillshare right now, because I know that many of you uh, follow the Skillshare. So I know many of you subscribe the Skillshare and I noticed that this course is actually um, way less popular than the other courses. And I think it as if you subscribe this, why not to watch this? Because you can have it for free. Once you subscribe my Skillshare, you have access to all of my courses. Um, you pay $15 a month. Um, some of you pay. If you are new here, also, you will get this for free. The, this, this is the point. And you can actually read on my screen on the top, give your friends two free months of Skillshare Premium and every three months when they sign up. So um, if you sign up now, you have an, like a, all of the people that I was offering on this YouTube channel could do this before. Some of them probably used already the two, three months. If you knew, still have a um, few, three months. And I have the link here. And yeah, I, I get actually $10 for, for, for the sign up. Uh, but it's not really about this. I more care about um, you watching the course and what you can get in this course. Well, I explained the retouching tools very well, um, including patch tool, which is barely used. Uh, actions brush removing hair and this course maybe has is so popular and is so likable among the students because I actually show you every single detail so I focus on like makeup nails very uh, closely I do work with liquify too much because in in retouching I barely work with liquify but this was the point like showing you every single possibility to make you expert in Photoshop of using every single tool. So that's how I treat this course. It's like deep view into every single retouching tool you could ever use in Photoshop, not necessarily copying everything that was shown in this course on every single image. So of course, there's also frequency separation, tons of lessons, ribs retouching, eye retouching, and in lip gloss. Um, shape of the eyes. Yeah, I, I do show this, like, which shouldn't be probably, um, used too much, but some people might like it. And there is actually plenty of lessons. A lot of lessons over seven hours, 7.5 seven, um, hours. So yeah, you can get this. And let's hit Photoshop. I do want to show you the first image that I was working. There is also update in uh, this course. So let's go back, let's way back to the very beginning. And what I was showing here, basic retouching. So patch tool, uh, even it's not very often used, I do show you how you're supposed to use patch tool. Basic, uh, basic clean up using on the empty layer. Then I separate this and showed you on the separate layer how to retouch hair, even though on the daily basis, of course, you won't be creating all the new layers when you want to retouch separate thing. But this is how this course was designed. Every single separate subject in every separate lesson, on every separate layer, in separate PSD files, so everything uh, was in order. I do was showing you the shape. Yeah, so that's obviously uh, a lot to do and not necessarily have to be used, but if you're not necessarily working in collaboration with photographer, and let's say you are a retoucher in this case, and you do some beauty product, and as a retoucher, you get the task 
we want to straighten the eyebrows and we want to knock down the nose and fix the the chin. This lesson was about this, like how to fix every single thing you could be ever asked. And yeah, indeed, I show you frequency separation, many different options. I actually uh, removed some of the layers that were visible here because that's what I was talking. Working on low layer uh, might ruin a lot, a lot of the uh, face features. Uh, working in between is a little better. And actually, I added some of the shape over here. So that was a thing where I spent whole lessons and working with the pores um, I barely even pay attention to it but back then I did pay attention to it and showed you even how to um, knock down the pores. The other huge section was about the very small details. So what was there? Was there like lip retouching? You can get closer like what to do when you have dry lips. And you can see the difference. Am I proud? I wouldn't change the color, probably. Uh, shape of the eye this is like something I wouldn't probably go too far with it. Let's activate. Uh, painting eyelashes. As I said, painting eyelashes, retouching the eye, and all of this stuff. Like, this is um, things that you even usually don't do in retouching. Uh, I have nails. This would be great lesson how you can restore and build absolutely new nails. Extra corrections which were missed. And of course, huge portion of Dutch and Burn. And that was, uh, I, as I know in this course, I show you two techniques, uh, how to do Dutch and Burn on the gray layer and how to do Dutch and Burn that I usually do with, uh, with curves. So if someone wants to also explore more techniques, that is a right way to explore. And also in this course, I was as I was knocking down some of the face features before, I had to uh, work with the global Dutch and Burn, which I don't do anymore. So in my newest courses, this subject is not so deep because this is not what I do. So that's why I think my newer courses have less information and are more professional, and probably that's why people don't like them, uh, because I'm just really showing you in my new course how my workflow looks like. It's less, and that's how you're supposed to work. But if you look for more information, that's the way to go. And also final color adjustments. So there was like colors, working selectively with colors, sharpening the image, grading, and all of this stuff was available in the final adjustments. So this is the thing I wanted to talk about to you because I noticed this course is really most popular one and the question about the frequency separation and solve some questions about what is professional retouching, how it looks like. Professional retouching is, in fact, using the basic retouching tools you have in Photoshop, using Dutch and Burn and color grading, just a few very simple elements that creates really outstanding results in most of the cases if you use them in the right way.